brought a couple to show you, if that's okay. Yeah, definitely. I want to see them. Well, the first one is when I was 12 years old, um, I read in a newspaper about the idea of creating a Christmas scrapbook. And so I said, okay, so what do I need for this? You know, we didn't have a lot of money growing up. And so, um, oh, gee, a folder from school? Sure. At the time, it would have been like this, like the paper, the cardboard version. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. A real simple, and then like maybe wrapping paper, you could wrap the outside and that sort of thing. And so I started that. And so, you know, like construction paper, um, mm -hmm. um, the rule, the line paper to write on. Oh, so yeah. Yep. For each day of the Christmas um, Christmas uh, season that we were on mm -hmm. right, those two, break, two uh, weeks. So I, uh, I mean, mind you, that was, that was 46 years ago. <laughs> years of these. But um, oh, wow. Because they were falling apart, I had to go through and, and kind of re, I guess, reconstruct them. Mm -hmm. I got me a big binder, a three ring binder. And I started taking them apart and putting them in here. I don't know if you oh. can see that. 72. So some old Christmas cards that I picked out, I put that in felt. And I had like one of those folders originally. Right. Yeah. So I'd have like a, something, this was a preface. As I, as I got older, it became the Christmas letter for the family. Okay. So I even gave myself a table of contents. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and then I wrote a diary every day. I'd take newspaper clippings out. Like this is, this was actually a, a family friend from church. And I went to school with the, the oh. oldest brother. And they had cookies, cookie recipes, like old German cookie recipes. Wow. So and then my mom gave me some. So this is where sometimes I'll go back for old recipes for cookies. Mm. German is our background. So I would mm -hmm. do that there. So and then 1970. Yeah, those, those, um, those recipes from your heritage are so important in your holidays. Uh, we make lefse every year, which probably neither of you know anything about. <laughs> it's like a tortilla, but it's made with mashed potatoes. <laughs> and you roll it out super thin, and it's it's a Norwegian bread. Oh, and, it good. Yeah, it's you know, very good. Very hard to make, unfortunately. <laughs> My mom called them little life cookies, and you know those are the cutout cookies. Mm -hmm. I recently found um, near here uh, in an old antique shop um, a little cookie cutter. I didn't bring it with me. It's hmm. red. It's like um, almost translucent red. It was a little lamb. Went oh, oh. those. So you know, I bought it just for the sake of nostalgia, I guess. Right. <laughs> but I have to say, as as um, years went by, mm -hmm. uh, I got married and. Uh, things change. So this, this one I showed you first is 81. Not a whole lot there. <laughs> <laughs> 1982 changed everything. Our first child. So now it becomes very decorative yeah. and pictures in it. This is still mm -hmm. a simple, you know, just a manila folder. And oh, yeah. um, so I did that. And four comes along and there's baby number two. <laughs> <laughs> now some of them didn't have pictures, but the decorative work on them were, was fun. And I need to tell you, these things are full of stuff. Oh, yeah. And you can put your kids' artwork or whatever from that year, that Christmas, and, you know, or whatever recipes you tried that maybe you liked. <laughs> the ones yeah, you that's a great idea. In 1988, our first son was born. So he added, you know, every year, mm -hmm. added to the family. Mm -hmm. So those are fun. And, uh, of course, presents, it was a special present we gave or received or whatever. Um, Right. were added. I was going to back up to 1975, and I didn't mm. do that one. 1975 was when my dad died, so I was 15 years mm. old. So that Christmas, um, you know, years and years later, reading back on the journal, you go, oh, this is hard to read. Yeah. But that's where you were at the time. Mm -hmm. My sharing this is if you've got kids or anybody out there on uh, watching this, uh, encourage your kids to do this. Because... Yeah years of memories that I can go back and it's a legacy for my kids. They Definitely. Can mom was doing when she was 16 years old. Mm. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I was going to grab, uh, yeah, I showed you the picture of Amy. Hold on. 
Where did she go? Here she is. So that was 1982, right? Mm -hmm. Fast forward, 46 years later, <laughs> they've gotten bigger. Oh, uh, yes. Her daughter. So my granddaughter. <laughs> things have gotten bigger. Of course, all of our kids, well, except Aaron, of course. Uh, well, no, Aaron's an adult, but all but one is married. Mm -hmm. uh, added my, my stepdaughter came into the picture uh, in 1987 and that Christmas, and then she joined us living with us in 88. So, mm. no, no, sorry, 88, 89. I'll get there in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> find a picture of I could not find my 2000 because that's the year Erin was born oh. at home school and you know what okay this is as close as we're gonna come mm. sitting on uh, the drum um, stool because my oldest ah. son played drums we had drums in the living room for years oh so yeah he got broken in sitting on the drum stead I, I can't find the 2000 but but Matthew was holding him and he was so tiny sitting on his oh. lap <laughs> this is the other thing I started. The year that Mike and I got married 40 years ago, I wanted to create our own stockings. Mm. Well, I just had to remake make new ones because they wear out. But mm -hmm. I did my own pattern. And then, is visiting. <laughs> yeah. Mike is doing. So this is my husband's more recently. And mine. Oh. It's just my own thing. And everyone is different. Here's Aaron's. He was born in 2000, so he was a millennial baby. Ah. He graduated from school in 2000. So I used the same fabric for her little scrapbook I made for her, and there was enough left. I said, this baby is getting his own <laughs> blue. <laughs> in 1988, when my oldest son was born, um, I wasn't doing this. So um, that year, believe this or not, I won a bingo game at church. <laughs> <laughs> And because Matthew is a guitar player, I found this years later and <laughs> the button. Oh, cute. <laughs> so each one, each kid has their own. Here's Joseph. The year I made this for him, he was playing handbell. So it was a, as a teenager. Mm -hmm. I made one. And both of these guys have gotten married recently. So here's one daughter in law. And ah, she, yes. The intention is to put a little um, harp, like a little. Um, Oh, similar to this, but I asked him to find me like a little charm because mm. she loves harp. Huh. The newest daughter mm. loves to bake. So I took some of that same fabric and just, it's like whatever I have, I just try to create. And then this is my granddaughter's from a couple years ago I made for her. She liked the reindeer with the little. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know. oh, that's cute. The little bow on the end. <laughs> <laughs> so I, those are just some of the things that I've had fun with. So every time a new person joins the family, and they can mm. it. it's just unique to that person, whatever's on my mind, whatever's on my heart. Mm. That, that's very special. And instead of trying to make everybody be like one another, you know, let's celebrate your uniqueness and um, bring that out at Christmas time. We've even sent some to Bulgaria. We have a very good friend who uh, we met about 10 years ago, and uh, she actually came to live in Texas mm. uh, when was born, so 18 years ago. And so she lives locally. And uh, I made one for her dad and her mom when they were here. And so one of them went back to Bulgaria and I got to embroider on there his name, his dad, mm -hmm. her dad's name in Bulgarian. My husband had to help me with that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so it did that. It, it's just kind of fun get to share yeah, that. Some of definitely. them have gifts. Yes, so I don't know. That's, that's part of what we do anyway. Mm -hmm. I love to read stories too. I had two stories I was going to share. Oh, here they are. These are old books. Mm. To read this one for Saint Nicholas Day. Santa, are you for real? Oh yes, I've seen uh, that one before. Uh, on Amazon and half price books, and these are expensive. Mm. Ooh, one was six hundred twenty eight dollars. I went, uh, 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 no. Ah. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Back to my childhood, I picked this up at a like a local pharmacy. It's a Christmas Carol book. Hmm. It's Christmas carols. And it's so much fun oh. if I can pull it out now and share it with Avery. And I have to admit, it's it's having Avery uh, after having Aaron being nonverbal and stuff for after so many years, I feel spoiled. You know, mm. it's not what it was like of a neurotypical child around, but I believe that he is getting to see her walk through all her milestones. And so mm. it, he, he 
this is, you know, I'm going to go grab a book like this and go walk off with it. Oh, honey, wait. Yeah. <laughs> He's fully torn. <laughs> but, um, he loves the tree. I always have to be careful where to put the tree. I don't know about you, Amy, but <laughs> we're talking about the sensory. Our tree does not usually last the entire season. So I started putting it up at the end of the season. But mm. uh, years ago, we decided we can put it up in the dining room on a table. Because oh. we, have close, we have a half door, like a Dutch door between the kitchen and the living room with a little button lock on it. So it gets half door. So if I don't want him in there, he <laughs> can't go in there, at least until we're in there with him. Mm -hmm. Things you have to be creative when you have these issues.